Okay, we're back. Thanks again for joining us, everyone. We're going to get started here at uh, 3 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we appreciate you all taking the time to learn more about Bloomhouse. Very, very exciting project that we've had in the works for about a year uh, that our team has been building. And we're going to go through and do a quick 15, 20 minute little presentation here, tell you a little bit more about different parts of Bloomhouse and questions we've been getting. And then we'll open it up to Q&A and uh, try and answer the questions the best we can for all of you here. So with that, we're going to go ahead and get started. My name is Alex Frost. I'm CEO of QuickFlora, and we are the makers of Bloomhouse. For those of you that don't know, we've been providing software to retail florists for over a decade now in the U.S. and Canada. So we specialize in high level point of sale, inventory control, e-commerce, purchase order management software for many of the top flower shops in the North America. And we saw the opportunity a couple of years ago to create a new retail platform to sell flowers. Because as we all know, there's been so many competitive uh, players come into the market that have been uh, delivering products at uh, faster speeds, at lower cost, and we decided maybe that the technology was right in terms of creating a retail sales platform uh, that would work for a lot of our floor shops. I also have with me today uh, Sherry, uh, who is our product specialist from Las Vegas, and uh, are you there, Sherry? I am. Good afternoon, everyone, and we appreciate having you in attendance. I am a technology advisor and consultant for Quick Flora. I'm a former florist. I had multiple flower shops in Southern California for about 20 years, and I have a strong technology background as I was an FTD technology liaison and a Teleflora technology specialist. So I've been around technology quite a while and joined Alex about eight months ago. Thank you. And we won't hold it against you that you used to work for FTD. <laughs> we all have history. Yes. All right. <clears throat> Let me just get the slideshow started here. So one of the things we talk to a lot of our flower shops about is how do we sell more flowers to consumers? And the same responses we keep getting back are that we want to make it as easy as possible for consumers to purchase flowers from us. And coming up in the traditional flower business, uh, I also forgot to mention, uh, my family also had retail flower shops when I was growing up. Um, and so we know the flower business very well. And, uh, and we know even back then, 10, 20 years ago, that we had very strict bankers hours, at least in our flower company. And if people wanted to buy flowers, they had to call us between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. every day. And that's when we would take the order, make the order, and deliver the order. But there really was no after hours option um, in terms of selling flowers after hours uh, in person. The other thing we keep hearing is the ability to offer delivery services when consumers want it, not necessarily when we're offering it. The ability to control the product quality. Um, if we can't uh, identify when the arrangements are put in these bloom houses, what time and date, and what time and date they should be aged out, then we can't control the product quality, which is critical for consumers. The ability to deliver at Uber-like speed. Um, a couple of years ago, we had a test project in Los Angeles where we had one flower shop just deliver all their arrangements via Uber all day. And it was a remarkable test that went on for a year. We actually ended up writing an extensive article about it in Florist Review. And we learned so many things, um, how profoundly fast it was, how it cost less than half of what it cost to put our trucks and drivers on the road back then. And consumers are accustomed now to getting things what they call on demand. And the ability to deliver quickly is critical in today's competitive environment. And finally, giving consumers more value for the money. 
so critically important these days. If you've surveyed uh, American flower buyers that patronize flower shops in the US, they consistently come back with two things. One is flowers are expensive, and the other is they die in two days. And that's tragic when we hear things like that because it holds back the whole market. And unfortunately, there's a lot of truth to those statements um, in, the, in, in the general retail floral industry. So we know consumers want it fast, as fast as possible. And in the traditional model, especially the one I grew up in and Sherry grew up in, we took an order by phone. We took two, three, four hours to make that order. That order sat around till the driver came by. Then the driver took it out in the field for another two or three hours. So delivery times between four and six hours were not unusual, especially even today. And these days with Whole Foods delivering within two hours for free and Walmart and Target jumping into the game and Amazon, consumers are consistently demanding faster and faster delivery. Even if it costs them more, they're willing to pay a premium. Of course, they want it fresh. That means we have to understand how to control quality. We have to guarantee that quality, meaning we guarantee those flowers will last seven days. They want it reasonably priced. Um, depending on the type of flowers they are and your local competitive conditions, that's gonna determine what reasonably priced is. We know a lot of people have been ordering flowers online in a box for a couple of decades now. And there's a lot of disadvantages to patronizing companies like Pearl Flowers. You know, the flowers won't come for 24, 48 hours. They'll come in a box unarranged. Uh, the quality might not be what consumers expect. So bricks and mortar flower shops have a strategic competitive advantage being on the ground with their own trucks, being able to service customers the same day. And even though the delivery by FedEx box market has grown to a couple billion dollars, that doesn't mean that uh, there's uh, more market share that's available locally. Consumers consistently prefer to go local when possible. That's one thing we hear over and over. Rather than use a national order gatherer like FTD or Teleflora, or 1-800-Flowers or Pro Flowers, they'd rather establish relationships and patronize local business, which is a wonderful thing. And these days, consumers love to order online or via their phone. It's just convenient, it's faster for them, and if you have an e-commerce site that's not mobile friendly, then you're losing a lot of orders by default there by not giving them those technology options. The other dynamics we see in the retail flower market is bricks and mortar flower shops are still going out of business at a rate of about 100 stores a month. So that's been going on for the last five or 10 years and really doesn't show signs of slowing down. It may continue for another two or three years at least. There's half the wholesalers there are in the US than there were 10 years ago. I think 10 years ago there were about 900 wholesalers and today we're down to about 400. And that's because the floors themselves are disappearing. And the mass market keeps capturing more market sales, which means by mass market, we mean supermarkets, big box retailers, Sam's Club, Costco, Walmart. Um, they have such enormous purchasing power. They make it convenient for people. Obviously, they don't have the design sense or the customer service that traditional retail floors have, but they've had a profound effect on the market. And that's why retailers must try and diversify their sales base when possible to compete in today's market. And online sellers just keep getting more and more aggressive each year. Uh, we saw that with the advent of 1-800-Flowers when they first went online many years ago, and then all the big players jumped in. And now we even have new upstarts like Books and Urban Stems and Flume that are trying to uh, outdo the large players and uh, the retail floors are really caught in the middle of that whole situation. One of the things we just talked about a little bit earlier is how do we speed up and cut delivery costs for consumers? And these new crowdsourced delivery services like Uber and Lyft and Deliv, which are available in many major markets nationwide, are really good people to partner with to expand your delivery capability. That doesn't mean you're going to give up your truck and driver, 
because those type of services are not going to deliver weddings or events or sympathy, nor should they. But if you have the ability to expand your reach, uh, your delivery area, and not incur any new capital costs or hire new people, then a lot of these services make sense. And I know when we tested Uber in Los Angeles, it was really remarkable how fast they would show up at the store and everything was delivered immediately within 30 to 45 minutes. And that's really uh, an incredible service level that even the players today are unable to match. We test a lot of these companies ourselves and we know uh, the value of the flowers that we get, how long they take, what we pay. And it's ironic that these companies spend more money on shipping than they do on the flowers themselves. And that's where retail floors on the ground have a strategic competitive advantage. You have the facility on the ground, you have your staff on the ground, trucks and drivers, you have a product and it's fresher in many cases. And it's definitely uh, a strategic way to compete against these online flower sellers. So with Bloomhouse, we tried to create a platform where the retailer stays in control. And by that, we mean the retailer, the flower shop decides what goes in those coolers. They decide what they're going to charge for them. They set their own pricing. And of course, they get paid directly through their established merchant processor relationships. That has nothing to do with us. We just provide the platform, the technology, and the software, and the sensors to make the platform work. And then the rest is up to the retailer to decide how they fine tune it. And of course, we don't take a commission on sales because it's not a vending machine. So what you sell is what you keep in terms of our bloom houses. Common question we get asked is, what is the total operating cost of a bloom house? Besides the cost of the unit itself, depending on the size that you choose, and we do have pricing on our website. Uh, you can find bloom house pricing on quickflora.com from small to medium to large units. Uh, you have the cost of a ground lease. Unless it's at your physical location, meaning outside your flower shop or on land that you own, then you may have a ground lease cost, anywhere from $500 to $1,000 a month, depending on where the unit is placed and cost for electricity, meaning utilities. You also have the cost of the inventory, which is perishable and has to be uh, churned out regularly. So that's something that needs to be factored in, and that's gonna depend on how many transactions a day you're doing. And then you also have the labor cost to restock the unit daily, once a day or twice a day as needed, depending on the number of transactions that you're doing. Now we do provide specialized software to control and monitor and manage the bloom house. And it's really based on software that we've been building for flower shops for over a decade. It's just optimized for the Bloom House system. And that means we have real-time inventory control. We know exactly when each compartment was stocked, what was put in that compartment, what it sells for at MSRP. You do get email alerts, low stock alerts when sales are made. We do provide full e-commerce capability. And that means that each Bloom House can have a special link that's either put on your website or you can use our own web platform to sell products that are in your Bloom House specifically. And people can check out online on their smartphone, on their tablet, and then receive a special QR code to go down there and pick it up. And that's really almost a complete web-based point of sale system just for your Bloom House itself. And we also provide IoT sensors, which stands for Internet of Things sensors in every cooler. And that means that we're monitoring temperature and humidity and security and when the doors open and close, um, temperature inside and outside the unit, even wind speed, all this telemetry data is flowing to the app on your smartphone. So you can be in the loop 24 seven, especially if your unit is outdoors as opposed to an indoor unit. There's also possibilities to partner with people in your area with uh, mass market retailers. You may have agreements with supermarkets to man their operations and you may want to put one in their store or outside their store. You could have relationships with hospital gift shops, 
um, cemeteries, hotels, shopping malls. Really, there isn't a limit to where you can put it other than where it makes financial sense, meaning you have enough transactions to cover the operating costs of your unit every month. In terms of how many units a market can support, it just depends on how many people are in that particular market. And uh, generally, you could probably place one every five to 10 miles. So it's conceivable you may have one major uh, hub distribution center in a specific city, and then you could expand sales and branding um, around that store with five or 10 units conceivably. As we mentioned earlier, we do manufacture um, in all sizes, from six doors to 12 to 24 to double-sided, and we also encourage custom projects. So if you have any special needs, by all means, feel free to communicate that to us and we'll try and get you a, a quote for your specific situation. How do we get started is a common question. Besides ordering your unit, which takes anywhere from eight to 12 weeks to manufacture and the shipping time to your particular zip code, we provide all the core technology, the training. We have financial partners like the Flores Federal Credit Union, or you could bring in your own leasing partners. Um, we provide setup assistance and we want to get you up and running as quickly as possible so that you could get a quick return on investment as quickly as possible and get up and running. We talked a little bit about where you can put a bloom house. There really isn't a limit except where you think it's financially viable. And the great thing is if you try a location out for two or three months and you don't see it getting traction, these are mobile units. So it's very easy to reposition them to another location or swap out one with a larger unit if you see you're getting a lot of transactions in one particular market. Um, we see many flower vending machines at airport arrival terminals uh, across the country. So those have been around for 10, 20 years. Um, and those are very basic vending machines. They only have walk-up capability. The difference between a vending machine and a bloom house is a bloom house is really a smart retail cooler platform because it has integrated options where consumers can buy online on their phone and besides being able to pay and pick up in person they have the ability to arrange final delivery from their phone meaning they can order a dozen roses at 2 a.m and your particular local partner in your area such as uber or lyft can be summoned to pick up those flowers and deliver them at 2 a.m and you can of course use your own driver on call but that's up to you to determine what the best options are for your particular market so that's the basics and we're going to open it up to Q&A here and see what questions we have here uh, on the board. So I see we have a couple of questions from Rick and let me see what he says. Please explain how a customer grabs the actual arrangement to select and pay. For example, when they make a selection, the door opens, how do we know they cannot grab a more expensive arrangement? So that's a good question. The system has um, compartments that are segregated so one cannot open one door and reach around and grab another arrangement. Of course, that would also be theft, and there are cameras in each compartment, both inside and outside the unit. So that would be bad if they actually did that. But it is a valid question. You can't just open one door and empty all the other compartments um, in the unit. Um, because there's sensors in there that tells when their arrangement's been picked up both uh, weight sensors and also motion sensors. All right, check the next question here. Next one is, what about chocolates and champagne if I offer those items? Okay, so chocolates, obviously we know all chocolate melts at I think 82 degrees. So that's not gonna be a problem when you're running uh, units at uh, cold storage temperature. But champagne, alcohol, is another issue. I'm not really sure it's legal to have a self-service alcohol vending machine um, in any states that I know of. So I would defer to your local state uh, alcohol authority, but I'm pretty sure because of the age restriction laws in most states, you just can't have a self-service vending machine. 
at least that I know of, I don't ever recall ever seeing one that dispenses beer and wine anywhere in any state of the country. And you can correct me if I'm wrong there. All right. Let me see. Can I purchase flowers at the machine or do I have to do it online? So there's two options. The consumer can walk up to the physical bloom house and use the keypad or their smartphone to purchase something that they see in the compartment. That's one option. And the second option is yes, of course they can do it online. They could be sitting at their office and be able to see what's in those six or 12 compartments, purchase what's in compartment 12, and the system will take that out of inventory and then pick it up at their discretion whenever they want to after hours. So that is definitely an option on the machine. And it's designed with real-time inventory so that you don't inadvertently oversell an item. If item in one compartment is sold, it's going to wait until that item is picked up before uh, it allows the system to replenish that item and then put it back in the available pool for sale. All right, so does the door automatically close tightly? Or how do I know the door is not left open or cracked? That's a very good question. We actually use electronic locks that are the same ones that are used by Amazon Locker. They're made by a very, very large locking company up in Pennsylvania. And they monitor when the lock opens, when the door swings open, and if the door has been closed or not. We have added voice controls to every step of the process within the checkout process so that it tells the consumer, please open door one. Once it senses op open door one has been opened, the next voice prompt is, please close door one if they haven't already closed it. Um, if the if the window is vandalized, we do have 4K CCTV camera options for every unit um, that monitor every compartment. So much like an ATM machine, it would be very dumb to walk up to the machine and take a hammer to it because everything is caught on camera and we have remote, uh, remote sensing capabilities. We can actually have remote voice controls also so that you could talk to the consumer or the person that's outside the unit. So that's a very, very good question. And the question of security has come up with outdoor units quite a bit. So we partner with a, uh, a very large CCTV vendor that uh, has 4K security cameras. And you can have anywhere from four to eight cameras around your unit. It has motion control. So as soon as something comes within 10 feet, it starts recording video and some of the lights turn on. Um, so there's lots that can be done these days with remote security if you're operating a 24 seven unit outdoors. You see the next question is, is the online point of sale that runs Bloomhouse able to manage more than one Bloomhouse? Yes. So if you have three or five or 10 units, then each unit has its own independent inventory control system. So you would be using one point of sale software system to manage multiple units. Um, so it's all integrated uh, completely. All right, the next question is, what maintenance is required for Bloomhouse? How would I find someone to maintain it? So that's a good question. We partner with Watsco, which is one of the largest uh, heating and air conditioning service companies in the country. And they have service technicians in about 300 different markets. Um, so we do provide maintenance capability if your unit has a warranty issue. So all units are warrantied for one year uh, with manufacturer's parts, the cooling system. And if there is service that's required, then we can arrange a service call with Watsco. Maintenance, there really isn't maintenance required. Um, like a lot of traditional coolers, these are over-engineered and they're built to last 10 or 20 years. Um, and there are temperature and humidity sensors, which most coolers don't have. So there's a special app that you have that tells you that if it's out of range in terms of temperature and humidity, and it sends you a text alert so that you know that uh, in advance. 
Next question is, are you saying someone can order items from their laptop or phone and pick up later and then it is no longer available? For instance, if someone is walking by and wants an item that's just sitting there but Mark sold, they cannot buy it and grab it. So that is a correct statement. If someone ordered an item that was in compartment six and they paid for it, technically it's sold. So they cannot open that compartment or the system will not resell that item again. The next question is, what happens if my cooler is fully stocked, but all items are sold and nothing is available to grab? Well, that's a good problem to have. And I would say if you're having that problem consistently, maybe it's time to get a much bigger bloom house if you're running that many transactions. So I think that depends on the circumstances. So it's hard to answer specifically. But you can certainly start with a smaller unit in one place with six doors. And if you see you're maxing that out every two or three hours, then it might be time to upgrade to a 12-door unit. So it depends on the situation. So yes, we've definitely thought about that issue in detail. And it says, is there, anyone, is there a way for someone to walk by and buy it now? Absolutely. So if they walk by and the items in that compartment are unsold, they can complete the transaction either on their smartphone or on the tablet that's on the unit itself. Next question is, if I want to move my bloom house a few miles, what is the range of cost of moving that unit? Okay, that's a good question. When we say they're mobile, we don't mean that you can just roll it down the street, even though they do have casters, uh, because of course you have to take into account the, the issue of electricity. There has to be a uh, permit uh, compatible electricity source there that's safe. So if you have a new location picked out, um, you can physically move the unit, even if it's fully assembled, um, easily. You can do that with a moving company, or you can use um, one of those docks that you rent, uh, ten, five by 10 foot docks, depending on, and roll it on there, strap it down, and move down the street. So it is possible to move it yourself or have another company move it for you. Next question is, I use RTI and Teleflora website, which I do not want to change. Can I have a website that just manages my bloom house? Can one website manage more than one bloom house? So I'll answer the first question is yes, you can either have a specific website that is just for your bloom house, or if you have an RTI website, you can put a link on there that says uh, bloom house availability, and people can click on that and they'll click directly to the Bloomhouse enabled website. So they wouldn't be checking out on your Teleflora website per se, but they would be hitting your main website and seeing what the Bloomhouse options are on that particular website. So there are ways to make that somewhat more seamless than having someone go to a totally different website altogether. All right, the question is about warranty. It's one year, but what are the average repair costs for the unit if something is wrong with the cooling or the technology screen? So it's a good question. So the cooling system comes from Emerson Copeland, which is one of the largest providers of cooling systems for floral coolers and actually food service coolers in the country. Um, so they're a very well-known company. Parts are available everywhere. Most service technicians know how to use it. And their mean time between failures is really in the thousands of hours for those kinds of units. Uh, it's not that coolers don't fail. Of course, we've all had coolers in our flower businesses and we know when they're failing because we can tell the temperature is out of whack. And usually that's after they've been running five or 10 years, assuming they've had some good preventative maintenance once a year, those cooling units should last you extended period of time. All right, the next question is, can you elaborate how Bloom Houses work with local ride-sharing companies for 24-hour delivery? Yes, okay. So depending on what market you're in, you have different crowdsourced delivery vendors. So for example, in Los Angeles, they can use Uber, Lyft, Deliv, and there's actually two or three new ones. So Deliv, D-E-L-I-V, is in about 90 markets right now, and they specifically specialize in B2B delivery for businesses. So a lot of shopping malls like Macy's and Nordstrom's use to live. 
And when you have an agreement with the live, they charge you for picking up the package and then they charge you a fee for delivery depending on how many miles it is from the store. Um, so you can use a company that like to live or you can actually um, summon Uber drivers directly depending on what market you're in, much like Uber Eats. All right, the next question is, is the name of my shop on the outside of the Bloom House? That is correct. We expect you to brand it with the name of your own shop, um, not our name on the unit. We may have a model number on it at the bottom in small letters, but we fully expect you to brand it with your company name. Absolutely. All right, all good questions. I don't think if there's any more questions. Well, uh, Sherry and I are available after this particular webinar. Um, Feel free to email us, alex at quickflora.com or sherry, S-H-A-R-I, at quickflora.com. And myself, Sherry, uh, or another technician, technical support person will try and answer your questions. We will wrap this up, and we'll put this recording online after it queues up. So look for the link to come your way in about uh, 60 minutes to two hours, and then you can watch that offline. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. We hope it was informative, and we look forward to having more discussions with you all about how we can help you increase your sales with Bloomhouse. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone.